Rosemary Sun. Uh, and if you're listening to us on Facebook, thank you so much. Don't forget, you can call in at 844-790-8255. That's 844-790-8255. Besides our live stream on Facebook, you can listen online at americamatters.us and on the TuneIn app from your phone or tablet. Just search America Matters. You don't have any excuse for not listening or watching us. I am here with my ever so loving and wonderful and understanding <laughs> co-host Janice Hermson, and of course we couldn't do this without our awesome engineer Craig Moss. They are both broadcasting from the studio in Reno, Nevada, and I am at my studio in a very secret place. Oh my God! Someone's messing around with my script here, and I'm looking around because I can't get on right now, and they are just messing around. I'm I'm here, and believe it or not. Ah, they just messed it up for me. I can't even get on to look at what I'm doing here. So uh -oh. <laughs> um, I'm in my secret location in wonderful uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm at the wonderful Tropicana. We were having some issues with the actual show itself. Uh, and, you know, to me, i got to be honest with you, it was, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a large headache trying because we had some technical difficulties and whatnot. So we are doing this right now via on the phone. And um, it, it's been a little bit of, of a nutcase thing. But I got to be honest, Janice, thank you try, for trying to help me. And <laughs> I had the actual old um, actual thing that I had because I never, you said you sent it, but I never got the attachment to it. So I'm sitting there. So I'm sorry if I messed up anything. Oh, you did just fine. You did just fine. No worries. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a of a of a crazy thing, and I can't. I had this thing in front of me, and then I guess Craig's trying to figure this out. The wonderful engineer that Craig is, I love him, and uh, he's trying his very <laughs> best to make sure we try and get this thing on the right way. But I couldn't even go ahead and, and print anything out. So that's the kind of issues that we've had. You know, it's when everything can go wrong, it does go wrong, and that was my issue today. You know, so. Uh, that, that it just it was what it was. So that's all I could tell you. Um, what's going on, Janet, on your end? Well, I want to make sure that everyone knows that we have two incredible gentlemen joining the show today. Gary Grossman is a multiple Emmy Award winning television producer and an author and ever so much more. We'll learn more about him in the second half. And Ed Fuller is a hospitality industry leader, educator, and author, and they both wrote Red Hotel, and they're going to join Basil in the second half. So if you have any questions or comments, make sure that you punch those in. Absolutely. And I'm still seeing poor Greg is trying to work feverishly on this thing, trying to make it work. <laughs> but uh, let me give you a little hint, too. As far as the uh, viewers and listeners, you guys aren't seeing me right now, and I'm sorry about that. But for those of you who do follow me, I want to thank the wonderful people, the District Convention in Phoenix, Arizona, and also in Portland, Oregon, at the Order of Ahepa District Conventions. They were fantastic. But right now, this week, right now, I, we did our first show last night at the Tropicana Laugh Factory, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Earl David Reed, very, very, very funny cat, uh, was uh, featuring for me. And then Al Kaz, very, very, very gentleman as well. He wound up um, uh, being with us as well just a great show from the top to bottom and uh it's just a lot of fun it really was so I'm, I'm excited about uh the rest of the week and then of course next week is the magic week i'm going to be over back in reno nevada i know I won't that be fun i'm excited i get to come in studio where we could probably get all this fixed and get everything taken care of so i'm excited about that and then uh, for those of you who are also wondering, hey, Basil, what's the rest of the stuff you're doing? Well, the 24th of June, besides the 18th or the 23rd at the Laugh Factory at Silver Legacy in Reno, Nevada, on the 24th of June, the very next day, I'm going to be across the country at the Comedy Cabana in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, that's the 24th to the 30th. And then from there, July 5th and uh, July 4th and 5th, I'll be at the Supreme convention um, that we're having over in wonderful Chicago, Illinois for the uh, HEPA, and uh, I'll be the uh, host and MC for that wonderful event. And then July 12th and 13th, I'll be at Cosby's Comedy Club in Newport News, Virginia. Now the 13th, for all those listening, well, there's nothing else I can tell you, but the 13th is already sold out. That Saturday night is 
sold out. Wow. So if you want to come to Cozzy's Newport News, Virginia, July 12th, that Friday, they have some tickets available. So um, that's what they tell you. So that that was really about it uh, with that. And, you know, uh, yeah. what can I say? I'm very popular. Chicks love me. <laughs> <laughs> Men love me, children love me. It's just a beautiful thing all along. Oh, it's and you love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and the thing is, I'm very humble. That's, that's the one thing. Oh, absolutely. Is- no conceit in your family. <laughs> You've got it all, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, what else is going on, Janet? Well, um, coming up, you've got some future guests. You want to talk a little bit about, uh, we got Harry Basil booked for the 9th of July. Harry Basil? Yeah. Did we already book him? We did. He booked a, he just confirmed for me. So we're just waiting on a couple of the other ones that are coming up. Um, oh, so, fantastic. Yeah. So I'm excited about and that. And I don't have that list in front of me, to be quite honest with you. That's the only sad thing. So, um, you know, but don't worry, I'll, I'll figure as soon as we wind up getting, I don't even see the show itself, but in how much time we got. But that's okay. That you got you got about fifty seconds left, so you got a little ways to go. I'll cut oh, you off. Fifty seconds. <laughs> oh my! I'll goodness. cut you that's off. A, I, I'm doing all the talking, and I'm not saving anything for you. But there's so much more that we can discuss. But um, you know, just in case, uh, just let people know that. Again, you are listening to a pinch of basil. You can call in. You can even text us. What's that magical text number, Janet? Magical number, 775-237-2266. And the call in, 844-790-TALK, which is 844-790-8255. So call us, write us, you know, all those things. We'll be on Facebook eventually, and when we are, then you can comment there. All right. Absolutely. And don't forget Gary Grossman and Ed will be with us at the bottom of the hour. Oh, there you go. You guys do that commercial thing. We'll talk to you. This, this is a pinch of days. To join the conversation, call 844 790 TALK. That's 844 790 8255. Now back to the show. Hey, everyone. This is Dave for what's going on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when it can go wrong on my end, and it's all me, folks, it's not the wonderful engineering processor that we have, our wonderful engineer, but it's me. Evidently, I've been doing something wrong all my life, and it's paying dividends right now. (laughs) This has been one of the craziest, wackiest things I've ever happened to be, but I'll tell you what, it's always entertaining, to be quite honest with you. So I am doing my very best to go ahead and, and to do everything I'm told. Janice, you tell me what what I'm doing. Well, uh, what I'm going to tell you is that um, you did do everything right. You know, we I, and I thought that since we had so many issues with we work on Skype, and I thought that would be a great thing for us to talk about because you didn't do anything wrong. And I want to mention that the same problem you're having right now is the one that you and I had when we were testing that out this set this morning. So um, we just can't hear you on Skype, and that's really the problem, and we don't know why. Well, I'm, I'm looking at his image right now, <laughs> laying on his bed in the hotel room. Um, he's holding the USB plug in his hand. It's not plugged into the computer. So you think that might be an issue? <laughs> well, my, do you want me to plug the microphone in now? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> We love it. We love it. He's, <laughs> this is this is live. This is live radio, radio folks, <laughs> and I'm actually going to create. I'm going to get it so everybody else can see him being live too. Oh joy! Yeah, that'll be fun. That. That'll be fun. He is dressed, right? Yes. He's not wearing one of his little things that. <laughs> well, you have to be I dressed too. For God's sake! God's sake. Oh. Hey Basil, <laughs> you can. Can I, can I go ahead and pick this up now? You can hang up the phone because we now have you on Skype. <laughs> and now we have an echo, echo, echo. Oh, God. This, has been, this has been the craziest thing I've ever done here. Uh, and I got to tell you, uh, I'm I'm putting my ear, my headset on. And this has been uh, absolutely nuts. But you guys can hear me now? We can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. All right. Hello. Oh. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, hold on. I see. This is like can testing. Now. Like yes, we three, can. Right? Can you hear us? Oh, apparently he cannot. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can. He cannot hear. You better chat with him hey, and let him know you that uh, 
Can you hear me? Oh, boy. Can you hear us? That's it. Evidently, I'm not uh, privy to, so Hmm. I'm using... Are you there now? Oh, I can hear you now. Oh, that's technology in action. How about that? It's me controlling his computer from 453 (laughs) miles away. (laughs) I, uh, I I I want to f- tell you though that I am uh, very happy to have this technology uh, <laughs> at my fingertips, and it's all me. To be quite honest yeah. with you, I was giving I was giving Craig all the credit, but folks, it's um, oh. it's me. Oh, who's I see. Been now it's all, all you, this. holding that cord in your hand up in the air while it should have been in the computer. Right? Listen, I, we did. How long did we go over this today? You well, and I tried. I so I think I might have some issues, and I don't know what the issues are, but I'm just letting you know. Well, a good psychiatrist might work. <laughs> That's a great start. Ah, uh, thank start. you very much. It's I, I, I love you too. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. Now I got to go back to my to, to to the word document that I was using because I was using that for. Um, Yes, yeah, so you have control of your notes. computer again. I'll let you. I'll let you control it the rest of the show. <laughs> and, 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 and I that appreciate that. I, I really do. <laughs> I, because he took the thing away, and I'm I'm reading off the you know the script that we basically have, and yes. all of a sudden Craig just like takes it over. I'm going. I felt like while he's reading, I felt like Jerry Lewis all of a sudden. Hey, lady, you know, and I'm like walking around. I felt like an idiot. So, um, but at least I can improvise enough to just get myself out of it. And like a true man that I am, I pass it off to Janice. There you go. So. Good job. Good job. And it worked. It, it did work indeed. It there did work. So, right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. But you guys can hear me okay, pretty well. Absolutely. And we can even see you. And that's even worse. Okay, so <laughs> I feel terrible. I'm laying on my bed because you would think at a hotel you'd have a lot of different outlets and everything to deal with. But uh, Tropicana, uh, evidently, they didn't believe in that. And so uh, they, they, I have to move all this. They had it a kind of an extension over here. So I got my phone plugged in on one side charging. And uh, then I had to come because I also had to have my computer hooked into as well. So it, it was a little bit crazy for me. So anyway, but I'm so excited and so uh, ill prepared for our two wonderful guests. And but I will be prepared. And, and but I get, did get a chance to see some of the stuff between Gary Grossman and also um, Ed Fuller. Uh, yeah, I mean, just unbelievable stories that they have written. Uh, and, you know, they they have a bunch of stuff that they put together. And you know how I love military suspense stuff. So. Um, and, and, you know, espionage and anything to do with, you know, with um, with the political uh, and also military type of um, uh, things that go on around the world. And, and this this new book, uh, Red Hotel, I can't wait to uh, get a chance to, to get my hands on it and, 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 and well, go I might, through it. Well, I might lend it to you if if you're uh, if you're good. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, is it, uh, I mean, is it really, because, like, you know, I also love Tom Clancy, right? Yes, but Tom yes. Clancy is this, this real long, in-depth beginning that sometimes that first two-fifths of the book no. is, like, sometimes boring no, as hell. you do not but get once, that with this book at all, no. Really? Okay, no. Uh-uh. okay. Nope, you'll like it. I'm sure I will, I'm yep. sure I will. But uh, I'm I'm excited about uh, getting a chance to talk to him, and you know, um, and he's a, my God, Gary Grossman is a multiple, multiple uh, Emmy Award winner, and for various things that he's done in the past. So I'm just you know, and, and I'm so happy he sees me at my best. Um, <laughs> this uh, with this show, to be quite honest with you. Well, you know, I had Gary on our What's the Story show, and. Um, we had some technical difficulties then as well, so I'm hoping, but it wasn't on our side, it was more on his side, so I'm hoping that this time everything will, will level off. Maybe we're yeah, done Yeah, I appreciate now. that. Maybe yeah, we're I done really now, do. right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, it's all about Basil and his little issues that he's had. <laughs> I don't even see a clock, to be quite honest with you. Is there even a oh, clock that I'm supposed to be looking at? Probably not, probably not. Yeah. Why would we want that? Why so, would we care? Come on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. So just let me know when we get close about 10 seconds out and say, hey, Basil, it's about that time. Would you I mind? I will do that for you. 
I'll keep you in line. Don't worry. And I and I appreciate that. Ah, guess what I found? I got a clock. How about that? See, so, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> I'm I'm getting emotional, to be quite honest with you. I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> so Basil, I know you had to create a new password today. And yeah. um, I thought you might be interested in some of the most common names used as passwords in breaches. See if maybe, hopefully, you didn't use one of these. So five of the most common names that are used in passwords as breaches are Ashley, Michael, Daniel, Jessica, and Charlie. Now, I can understand Charlie, but Ashley? Really? Oh, yeah. Ashley on? is a big-time security type of a, a password that is used. As a matter of fact, um, the military uses Ashley as their passwords on certain things. Oh, to keep good. Encrypted. Well, that's yeah. the most breached, so good for them. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, i tell you what, man. Uh, I, I got a chance to see a movie uh, a couple of years ago, um, and I forgot the name. It was with Bruce Willis about how this kid who um, uh, is he, he's he's severely autistic. And they say that children who are and, and individuals who are severely autistic have special skills that they can rip through just about anything. And this kid wound up in this movie uh, tearing apart a, an actual encrypt a high a high uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A high top secret encrypted type of a thing, a password that the kid just looked at it and told him what it was. The the movie's called Mercury Rising. That's it. That's it. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. And uh, what did you think about that movie, Craig? I loved it. I did too. You know, I I really really enjoyed that movie, and I thought it was it, it was actually outstanding, to be quite honest with you. So I was like, all right, th this is really, really cool. So um, what we're going to do is, um, you know, uh, talk about this movie, because I tell you, uh, this Red Hotel really intrigues me. Um, and, uh, you know, I get a chance to talk. And this is one of the reasons why I love doing this show, to be quite honest with you. I, I love doing uh, shows like this, where we get an opportunity to speak to these authors, to go ahead and speak to uh, people who have, it, because to break the, a book down, you really have to understand everything that you're writing about. And I, I don't mean that in a, in a stupid way. I mean, you really, even when I wrote, uh, I, I wrote Athenian Love Affair, and I had to break down everything as far as, and my stuff was really simplistic, but it was still a very, very difficult uh, thing to do all your research. Well, and and then, I love And then consider, so, sorry, but consider the fact that you've got both of them writing. So oh, absolutely. now they have to coordinate those thoughts not only coordinate but you have to agree with right. this person yeah and to say hey how do you feel about this plot line if we wind up going in this direction that's the part that really amazes me how do two people like when i write i write by myself because i don't want someone telling me hey how about we go in this direction you know yeah but don't the characters tend to just take you there I, I, sometimes you can't control where that story goes it takes it it takes you there I agree. It, it really does. <laughs> it no, does. no, it really does. But there are times when, though, you know, I, I, someone like I have a friend of mine. Is, as a matter of fact, I was just texting beforehand. Jay Boyd. This guy can throw out a hundred and one ideas, and I'll crap on a hundred of them. But that one idea that he has is always fantastic. Yep. So never give up. But listen, folks, it's about that time again that we got to go ahead and break for a little word from our sponsors. So we'll be right back with a pinch of basil. Stay tuned. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775-237-2266. Now back to the show. Welcome back. You are listening to A Pinch of Basil, and we have been talking about all the different fun technical challenges you sometimes have when you travel. And Basil is in Las Vegas right now at the beautiful Tropicana um, and having a few technical issues with his own computer trying to get access. We do have Gary Grossman with us and Ed Fuller will be with us very soon. Um, so as soon as we can get Basil back, we're gonna start things going. But in the meantime, um, I'm gonna 
talk a little bit uh, about Red Hotel, which is the book that Gary Grossman and Ed Fuller wrote. Um, I'm going to look for the heads up from my engineer there when we have Ed on the phone, and uh, then we can start the interview and hopefully get Basil back to conduct this. But um, I've done a couple of interviews here and there, so I can probably uh, do a little bit here. How are you doing, Gary? I guess we ah, there you go. go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We have you. Okay, great. Doing fine in Los Angeles. Thank you. We're having a uh, heat wave that I guess is heading your way. Yes. Uh, and as, as they say, well, at least it's a dry heat. It's a horrible dry <laughs> heat. <laughs> I know I, it's not humid, but it's a horrible dry heat. <laughs> But I am originally from the Los Angeles area, and you really are lucky that it's dry this time around because oftentimes it is not. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> I'm going to call you on that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree with you. It's been really hot here as well, and uh, boy, that's uh, too much, too much. So um, I, I will be glad when, when winter rolls back around again. <laughs> You're not going to get a lot of people signing that petition everywhere, though. <laughs> no, I know that. I know that. I'm I'm pretty lonely on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit? I know we're trying to add in Basil and we're trying to get Ed in. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the book that you and Ed uh, wrote, which is called Red Hotel? Thank you. Happy to do that. Uh, certainly, it's one of our great joys to talk about it after uh, spending a year, year and a half writing. Uh, Red Hotel is largely, it's a fiction uh, thriller. Um, it's a geopolitical thriller, but a lot of it is based on Ed Fuller's own experience. Ed was the president of Marriott International the international side of Marriott for 22 years and 40 years with Marriott. And when I met Ed, it happened because a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, Bruce Fierstein, who's uh, a James Bond writer. He wrote oh. the first Pierce Brosnan, James Bond books. And we're both, Ed and I, both friends with him for various reasons and connections. And Bruce said, you have to meet this guy, Ed Fuller. He's interested in collaborating with somebody on a novel. And I thought, after I heard Ed and his credentials, I thought, gee, that's great, but I've never collaborated with anyone on a political thriller, but tell me more about him. Well, he did, and we had the meeting, and in 30 seconds, I realized that Ed Fuller was as much in the anti-terrorism business as the hotel business. Oh, wow. And I believe we might have Ed, no, we don't, sorry. I thought we had him, but we don't. Keep going. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and the Ritz and Marriott hotels were blown up in Jakarta. Uh, Ed had to deal with getting his team out of uh, Cairo with the fall of Mubarak. Likewise, out of Tripoli when Gaddafi fell. He had to deal with um, uh, terrorists and uh, cartel members and uh, uh, kidnappings. So I heard all of that in basically 30 seconds. So my first question to Ed was, well, who do you have on speed dial? Uh, <laughs> when he told me, and I learned that it truly was a matter of what kind of international intelligence contacts do you have to make things safer, uh, I realized we definitely could work together. So Red Hotel is this international story that begins with a bombing of a hotel in Tokyo, fictionalized, but we're really describing the uh, situation in Jakarta that he experienced. And then it builds on that in a in a geopolitical spy world that takes us around the world and ultimately to Brussels. And the bad guys in this are bad guys who we read about every single day and hear about on the news and you report about. And those are the Russians who mm -hmm. ultimately want to bring back their country to the manner that it existed in the Soviet Union with those border nations the Eastern Soviet bloc nations, protecting them from NATO and Western Europe. Trouble is, a lot of those countries are in NATO now. Right. So plot that runs through Red Hotel is really a Putin-esque character uh, trying to unravel what had been put together uh, ever since the fall of the Berlin Wall. And it goes back and forth in time. 
But the exploits, I can tell you, even though they're fictionalized, so many of them are based on Ed Fuller's real experience. And when he gets on, he'll have tips, travel tips, and what we should all learn and what we should do before we get on a plane and go almost anywhere. Can you tell me, um, for the, you had hotel bombings in your book, did it actually mirror anything in real life, like any real life attacks that... um, Yes, great question. Well, the beginning does um, uh, echo what Ed experienced in uh, Jakarta, uh, Indonesia, but it builds to a uh, climax in Brussels. And in Brussels, I mirror another experience that Ed had, and it was again in Indonesia, with the planting of the bomb. Uh, It wasn't so much terrorists from the outside. It was a plant who worked in the flower shop, who had been there for years, in fact. And what I discovered in doing research with Ed and additional research and talking to experts and, and, you know, what the the impact and what the, the... the uh, success, rather, of a bomb-sniffing dog or bomb-sniffing dogs can be in finding bombs. They're not so good when things are hidden in freezers. Oh, that's they true. Huh? Out. <laughs> so if you imagine putting bombs in a flower shop in the cooler area, they're going to be overlooked. So we build towards, and I'm not really, it's not a spoiler alert, but we build towards um, a potential bombing in Brussels, Uh, on the eve of an important meeting. And what the reason for that is, is all about a provocation. Um, And that's based on real life and real experience, as are many of the other things that are in the book. I mean, Ed is just a fat, I hope hope he can plug in. I know, they're trying. (laughs) Fascinating man. And to realize as as I work with him, because I've written other political thrillers under a series called the Executive Series. Executive I was just going to ask you about that. That's funny oh. that you bring it up. Okay. Well, Executive Act. Thank you. Executive Actions, Executive Treason, Executive Command, and last August, Executive Force came out. And that's one series that I write from truly the comfort of my computer uh, with experts in the State Department and, and Washington and intelligence communities, but working with Ed, Ed Fuller's the real deal. He had a um, nonfiction book that he's written, a wonderful business book. I love it. And I keep recommending it to people in business. Sometimes they appreciate it. Sometimes they don't. (laughs) And when they don't, I still send it to them. Ed's book is called, You Can't Lead With Your Feet on the Desk. Hmm. That's a good title. Exactly how he ran his operation in Marriott International. He went into the field. He built loyalty. He was concerned about uh, safety. He developed the color code system that right we use in Red Hotel, that we develop in Red Hotel. It's discovered and, and invented in the book. Well, in fact, Ed developed it. We have to be thankful that there are people who are paying attention to things. And we have to be well, observant ourselves in a way that we never were before. That What's the old saw? Or not so old. If you see something, say something. Right, right. We've got to do that today. He's made me smarter about travel, about where I sit in restaurants, facing out instead of facing walls. Um, I think a lot of military people have that have that sense about them just from their training, don't you? Absolutely right. And Ed comes out of... Um, the army as well uh, served in Vietnam and he brings that as, as certainly to the experience at Marriott as well as the uh, the book which came out in March but there's so much interest all the time I mean in the last week look at what's happened in the Dominican Republic and people have been dying oh in, I know it's crazy in hotels. unknown why but before you travel check the State Department advisories, see what what's safe, what's not. We have to be much more vigilant today than ever before. If you're sitting at a, uh, oh gosh, at a, um, uh, a restaurant as I was uh, having coffee outside in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that there was a suitcase left on the corner. I wasn't the first person to notice it. Somebody else called the police in. Police came, checked it out, 
uh, they were able to look into it. There was nothing inside. And I went out after and said, just a curious question, because I write in this area. Um, you didn't have any bomb sniffing dogs. You no no uh, bomb squads coming over. And he said, uh, the officer said, we would have if we had not been able to look in. But if we had not been able to look in, we would have had to close down four blocks in either oh, wow. direction, be helicopters overhead, everyone would be evacuated. And fortunately, this was one time that we could actually look in and see. Wow. Well, we are coming up on our break, and um, looks like we might have Basil coming back. So when we come back, we'll have Basil. Maybe Ed will be able to join us. We shall see. And, of course, Gary Grossman, who's been giving us that rundown on Red Hotel, will be right back with a pinch of basil. Now back to the show. Oh, we are indeed back with a pinch of basil. I am finally back on the air, and it feels so good. I, I like to thank all the uh, gremlins that have been attacking my computer and the <laughs> internet system that I have. I like to actually, I want to help and say a big thank you to the Campbell Soup people for the two cans and the piece of string that go from here all the way to Reno, Nevada. I've been listening to Gary Grossman, and really, Janice has been doing a hell of a job. And I'm just going to call it, you know, a pinch of Janice because, to be quite honest with you, I had just doesn't have a good interview. ring to it. <laughs> and I, right now, I'd rather shoot a, a, a shot of heroin in my rear end, to be quite honest with you, to relieve the pain that I'm going through right now, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, Gary, I was so you know intrigued by everything you said. I I love um, military suspense, anything. But the one question that I had as a creative cat myself is when you and Ed started writing, and Janice and I were talking about this a little bit earlier before you came on. When you're writing, you have control of the destiny of where you want to go. When you work with someone, and, and as much as you may uh, respect and admire and all that, it may not be in the direction that you want to go. Do you guys ever get into loggerheads as to where the direction of, of, of the actual uh, screenplay and or novel that you're writing? Do you guys ever have issues like that? Great question. Let me just say, Ed People knows people who know people. So... <laughs> I understand. Really and, good idea. and Ed is with us now, so he's on the phone with us now. Hey, hey so Ed. go ahead, Gary. Take <laughs> it from there. Uh, the question was, how how do we work uh, together, and and do we ever come into uh, loggerheads? And, and you know, really no, because we develop the story from the beginning. Ed shares his his life with me, his experiences from the time he was growing up and when, when he was in college in Vietnam and 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 on to his career. Um, so the book is Red Hotel is really based so much on his experiences, which gives it grounding. And then we develop the story together. But what happens after that is characters, sounds like a Twilight Zone episode, <laughs> episode, characters basically just knock on the door and say, hey, you know, Ed, Gary, move over. I've got, I'm going to, I'm suddenly in your book. And that's the fun part, too. That's absolute real excitement. But it's a great collaboration. And we have... We have uh, friends in common. We have Boston in common. Uh, I have my Marriott Miles, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, and and it's just been the best collaborator I can imagine. Well, Ed, welcome to the show. Um, uh, you know the things that Gary was saying that it it was basically all him who wrote this whole story, and uh, he gave you so. <laughs> hey, Hazel, <laughs> we lost Ed. <laughs> Oh, we he went away. Me. We lost Ed. Yeah, evidently yeah, he the just, gremlins have yeah, gone Yeah, they're to Ed. after us. <laughs> yep, he, oh, this is God. craziest thing. I I love I love writing. Um, and I'm I'm not saying I'm nowhere near uh, your caliber of writing, but I, I will tell you, I love the idea of always adding a new character. And I love the ability of, because it changes the whole complexion of where you're going that direction. And it takes the reader into that. And they're like, OK, swoosh, I'm going to go in that direction with them. And that's got to turn you on so much when you write. Because I know when I get excited about coming up with an idea of going in a certain direction where you have creative control, I love that. And you must jones on that. 
Oh, it's a perfect way of describing it. It's the most exciting part. And I often describe writing novels as uh, I don't write the first draft, the characters do. And I come in after and say, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. you need to set something up a little earlier. And again, working with Ed, that's very, very easy. Because he'll, in the sequel to Red Hotel, which we're just finishing now, uh, he said uh, just about two, three months ago, I think we can get something in regarding Venezuela and what's going on with Venezuela and an experience I had. And he gave me the experience and pff, I was just off and running with it. And then it just means you got to plant the seed early. You've got to present it in its long form where it belongs. And then what are the echoes of it further down the line? And sure. it's it's. Um, it's a joy. And I never, is Ed back on? Not yet. No, not yet. he has not called back. So maybe he had a problem because the line kind of cut out on us. So I'm guessing something happened on his end. Um, where, where is he at, by the way? Is he here at stateside? Uh, yeah, well, as far as I know, <laughs> but he has <laughs> traveled to the Middle East and China a lot. But yes, <laughs> he, he, uh, just a little backstory, because I didn't even know that I was going to become a thriller writer. And I mm -hmm. developed it kind of late in my career. Basically, I'm a TV producer by day. Um, but uh, my business partner and I at the time, uh, Rob Weller and I were in New York pitching to the History Channel. And I remember the day exactly, because somebody in the meeting said, do you think we're running out of history? This was at the History Channel. Hmm. And I said, no, 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 we'll never run out of history. What makes it even more profound is that that day was September 10th, 2001. Wow. So when we drove back to Los Angeles because we couldn't get a car, I began thinking about what TV shows could we do that would help us understand or put in perspective what we had gone through, what the nation went through, and in visiting people across the country for the first time, I think many people realize, yes, New York is part of the United States. And I also thought, well, what about, what can I do to explore that more? And that's when my thriller writing began. And working with Ed is the first time that I've ever had a collaboration. And that in itself was something I thought, well, what will it be like working with somebody? You know, I, uh, I've been the luckiest person to have the best writing partner that regard in Red Hotel, and then there's going to be a sequel, and then the third book that can come out of it, because the news is so nuts these days that it, I think sometimes it takes some real grounding in a thriller to say, what are our real and present dangers? What do we really need to worry about rather than all the noise that's filling the news? I think some of the things that, you know, we can look at, I always thought I, I would do well in plotting against the United States, but working for the government, because I live in an area in Wilmington, North Carolina, where we basically are a port of entry. And I'm always nervous in any port of entry where ships come in, that you can have a container ship and or a container and take a small a small amount of weapons grade plutonium that was made perhaps i don't know in chechnya and you it, it, you know blow it up with conventional you know dynamite and just that alone as a as a dirty bomb if you will it, it actually create that city is you can't live there any longer just for the fact you know yeah. and that's my biggest concern because that small little golf ball size of plutonium can take out 50 square blocks of Manhattan or render a, a small little town like Wilmington, North Carolina, and its importance to go ahead and take that. I always look for those types of opportunities, and I will look at something and go, you know, this is where our military is at. This is, you know, where we have a combination of the 82nd Airborne in Fayetteville and then also Camp Lejeune over in, Jack in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And everyone comes directly to Wilmington at the harbor there. You know, people come you know, in and out. And I'm always concerned. Forget, if, if I were a terrorist, forget the major cities. Go to the secondary cities. You're absolutely right. And after 9-11, uh, the Pentagon and State Department, and I suspect to some degree the CIA as well, called in screenwriters 
and novelists. I did not yet become a novelist. They called screenwriters and novelists, thriller writers, James Bond writers, into Washington to say, what are we not thinking about that we should be thinking about? And taking a page from that, uh, Ed and I think about the unthinkable. And if you think about, as you're describing, Basil, what is unthinkable, you can come up with what's plausible, and in fact, what may be right around the corner. And uh, so the true. we have got to be smarter. We've got to be smarter going to malls. We've got to be smarter uh, going to movie theaters. We've got to be smarter uh, when we're at restaurants and taking notice of people who leave packages. All of those things. So you're absolutely right. And by the way, what you're describing to some extent is the beginning of the sequel to uh, Red Hotel. And it's also, if you remember, in the 1980s, there was a TV movie called Special Bulletin that was about Charleston that was uh, just that plot that you described. It's, it's, you know, it's simple because I always felt that, it, you know, situations like that, that's where the thrillers come from. Hey, Basil, and, you and, know, I yeah. need to interrupt you here because I want to make sure that Gary gets to tell everybody how to get the book and where. Yes, please. Okay. Um, bookstores for sure, but uh, it's online at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. The book is Red Hotel, not The Red Hotel. It's Red Hotel, uh, Gary Grossman and Ed Fuller. There's a wonderful Audible edition uh, if you prefer Audible, but it's in uh, hardcover, uh, Kindle, and CD, and um, what else? Uh, Boy, I think you got it all. <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you. Gary, I got to tell you, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so sorry about the cluster of us having to get together. And poor Ed is still trying to probably call in. And Ed, <laughs> I love you. I really do. But it's about that time that we did our close up shop. Can we have you back? Love it. Absolutely. I would love it as well. Please. I want. I would love to have you back because there's so much that we, you and I have in common, and I'll tell you in another in a previous life of mine. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more time for Gary Grossman and also Ed Fuller, who couldn't make it. Reminders, don't forget to listen every week on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. New York City time. You can be heard all around the world on americamatters.us. If you're using the TuneIn app for the radio, just go to Pinch of Basil. Any questions, comments, go to Basil Fans on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or give me a call at 844-790-8255. Gary, thank you for joining me. God bless all of you. Have yourselves a great time. We'll see you soon. Peace.